So, I, yeah. First, what, what we'll be doing the next, I think, hour or so is we'll be talking about how to find how to find things on the internet. That is, how to find information, and that sometimes means how to find people on the internet because, well, the, the, the smallest part on the internet is like the individual that knows something and, and you maybe want to know who, who knows something. Well, um, this is mainly directed to um, people who have not been that long on the internet. I hope it will be very value, value, valuable for, for people who have been on the internet for a longer time. Hi. And um, yeah, so we have an hour, that's not much. Um, why, I'm, why am I doing this? Uh, because most, uh, mostly because I wanted to have an uh, excuse for writing all this stuff down and giving me myself a kick to, to write everything down, make some nice slides and use them over and over. Okay, so the slides are not totally fully ready because that's not my PC and there wasn't a Netscape Composer on it and I wanted it to do an HTML from the first, uh, for the first part and well, I hope well, you can't see anything, right? Okay, so my name is, is Hendrik. I've been with the CCC for a long time since I think that my first Congress was in 1998. 98? No, 89? 89. So that's, that will make the, the, the Congress in December my, my 10th or so anniversary. Well, we see. Okay, um, let's, let's start. Oh, cool. <laughs> Fine. Um, so, let me, let me do some, some questions here. Who's been longer on the internet than, let's say, five years? Okay, some. Um, longer than one year? Most. And uh, less than half a year? Nobody. Okay, okay. I hope I can teach you something. Well, what I'll be talking about is uh, the basics, the information resources that are up on the internet and I hope we can uh, get uh, some nice list here, some comprehensive list. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to, to um, well, just throw up some things I haven't put down here, so uh, I hope this will be, will be something you, well, will you share some knowledge with, with all the others in this, in this tent here. Okay, next is um, what tools are out there and how can you use them and what, what do you do if, if all these tools fail, if all the search engines then don't work for you, what can you do then and where to find some information and stuff like that. And at the end, I hope there will be some questions and somebody who will be able to answer them. Maybe me, maybe some, some of you. Okay. So, the problem. What's the problem? The problem is about finding information on the Internet. You know, the Internet started without something called the World Wide Web. That's like... 20, 30 years ago or something. But even then, there was the problem on how to find the information that was up on the internet. And there were like search engines like Veronica, I don't know who remembers that, that was a Gopher search engine. And uh, the main problem then the, in the back in, in these days was how to find the right uh, mailing list. Uh, and then if you have a little bit better access, how to find the right news group. And now, of course, it's how to find the right web page, how to find the right web board, the right web ring, the right mailing list, of course, um, all the time. Well, whatever. See, what, what kind of information resources do we have? We have, of course, the World Wide Web itself. And you can uh, search the, the World Wide Web with search engines. I'll talk about that later. We have databases that most of the time have um, a World Wide Web interface. I mean, I'm talking here about like uh, the RIPE database, for example, or yellow pages like 411 or the realwhitepages.com or something like that. And then we have, of course, Usenet News, 
as an information resource. We have web message exchange boards. That is something like a news group, but it's based on a World Wide Web interface. And it's, well, there are millions of people up there. We have mailing lists. And I believe that mailing lists uh, have become more popular since uh, news began degrading because of all these spammers out there and people, you know, putting, posting pictures in non-picture web uh, news groups and stuff like that. And then we have IRC, like in uh, real-time chat. And we have, of course, uh, individuals, people connected to the internet that know stuff and that stuff may be interesting to you and they may share or may not share it with you. Maybe not via news, but maybe via email, stuff like that. Okay. Can you understand me? Am I talking too fast or something? Just raise your hand and tell it, okay? So, first thing is the World Wide Web. We have, for the World Wide Web, of course, search engines. You know, you, you name some. Anybody know some, some search engines? engines? Alta Vista, okay. Everybody seems, uh, seems to know this one. Alta Vista. Pardon me? Ah, Northern Light. Pardon me? I don't know that. How do you spell it? The mother of all. It's like M O. Mama? Okay. Yeah, fine. Okay, these are some. Basically, as far as I know, there are basically three different kinds of search engines. Like search engines, you have their own database, like Alta Vista or Northern Light. And then you have meter search engines, that is search engines that, that uh, use your input string for searching in other search engines, like Mama of uh, Meta Crawler, I think, dot com or something like that. Is will be will be uh, re using your search string to search other databases like Northern Light or Alta Vista, and then we have uh, something a, a, a more recent development in search engines that is search engines that use like um, information like. Uh, how many times these pages they are indexing are indexed by, ad, by other pages and stuff like this. You may have heard about Google. Anybody heard about this one? Google? Yeah? Anybody able to explain it better than me, than I can, what it does? It's interesting. Look, look in, in, in this one, it's not mainly looking only at, at the, the, the page and what information is in there, but it's also looking at who else is, is referring to this, to this content and stuff. So um, there is also another one. It's, it's, uh, you can't use that one because it's an, an IBM internal prototype only these this days. I've read about it, I think, in Scientific American or something. Um, this prototype will search web pages and will try to find out who is referring to these web pages. And then you'll get to, to a list or to, a, to, to the, you have the, the possibility to differentiate web pages like in this is a web page that has information on it and this is a web page that has information that points to other web pages. Okay, so you have like hubs and sources. And a source is a web page that comes up with information, has information, where the information is put up by some knowledgeable people. And you have hubs, that is web pages that point to other web pages uh, from a different, uh, from, a, from a specific uh, issue, of a specific topic or something. So, and this, this kind of, of search engines is, is coming along. And uh, Google is one of the of the first that's, that's going there. So what's the problem with the, with the World Wide Web right now? The problem is that really you don't 
search everything with a search engine like Alta Vista. There was recently uh, some news about this Northern Light search engine because they, they were said to be, they were reported to be uh, the most, the biggest one. They have indexed 17% of the internet. People believe that there are 8 million, 800 million, excuse me, 800 million web pages out there, and this has like 17% of them. I mean, 17%, that's not even a quarter, right? So that's not much, and Alta Vista is even less than that. So if you want to search most of the web, you have to use a meta, meta uh, crawler, web, meta search engine, and even if you use that, you won't get f beyond 20% or something like that. So, um, also in the news, there was something that's called a search engine that's called All the Web, www, all the web dot com, and they say, and that's what they say. I I don't know at all. They have right now 200 million web pages indexed, and so they are the biggest out there and uh, not Northern Light anymore. <laughs> so, uh, and they believe that they'll be able to index like the 800 million web pages out there by the end of the year because they have all these cool Dell computers with, I don't know, whatever. Uh, have a look at them. It's, it's not bad. Have a look at Northern Light and, well, I use Alta Vista pretty much. There's also something that's called www.searchenginewatch, um, I think, .com where you can find some information on what information these search engines are indexing, right? So that can be pretty interesting. Um, yeah, what you, what you need to, to remember when, when using web pages is if you get more than like say 100 hits, you have, you have stated the wrong question, okay? So if you, if you have like 1,000 hits, fine. Nobody is able to search if a thousand hits in well a week or something. So you need to, to put in more more uh, more specific question. And of course there are some some uh, tricks or whatever. It's mostly very interesting or very very important to to really read the manual of the search engine. Like in what can you can you do to to make your search more specific? I think everybody knows. Um, that if you put a plus sign in front of the word you are searching for, it will only come up, the search engine will only come up with words that, uh, with pages that really have this word included. Okay? If you, if you put up something like uh, Northern and Light, some search engines will search for pages that have Northern or Light or both. So they will pull up the pages that have northern and light first, but the last, I don't know, thousands of pages will have only northern or only light. Okay? And if you put it like plus northern plus light with a space in between, I would show it, but you can't see anything, so it's of no use. Um, you would get only pages that have northern and light in there. That's, so that's something interesting. The next thing that's interesting is you can use a minus in front of a word and then you will um, not get pages that have the word that follows the minus on the page, right? So, do you get me? Okay. Um, another good thing is to use quotes like in blah, blah. That will give you pages that have has uh, have blah blah in like this this sequence, right? There must be blah and then a space and then another blah, okay? And you can use even that and make a plus sign in front of that. So combining these these kind of uh, requests will will help you to get a more specific, more precise search. So and. Another thing is, it's, it's what I found out searching for, like, you know, tools, stuff, um, little tools, interesting things. You can go and search for names of, of the pages that people use. For example, if you look for hacking.html or HTML, 
uh, asterisk, so you won't only get HTM, but also HTML, both. You get a lot of useful, uh, interesting pages out there. So think about what the people that put up pages might have used as their, as their name. And if you find interesting, interesting pages, look at their names, like in the file name, and use this file name for another search. So that gives you some, some interesting uh, uh, stuff to, to find, like hacking, like hack, like hacks.html, stuff like that. That's interesting. That will give you some, some more things. Um, yeah. Anybody thinks that I haven't mentioned something about search engine that I should have mentioned? 411 and stuff like that? Yahoo? Why do you think Yahoo is important? Yeah. You mean like in Yahoo, like in having these groups of uh, information? Yeah. Yeah. That's maybe a good hint. I didn't mention it because I don't use it at all. But um, of course, if you look for Yahoo, they have like themes, subjects, and you can go and, and, and like in computers and then consumers and then PCs and, and stuff like this. And so go down and down and down in, in uh, a hier hierarchy and, and find information that way. I, I almost don't use it at all, so. Um, but it may, might be interesting. Anything else? Web ferret? I think I've heard about that. That's a program to be installed on a single PC. Yeah. So it's searching the whole web, but I don't actually know how they work. It's a data search engine. Uh huh. Web ferret? Okay. There are some, some other tools out there, like Alexa. I don't know. If you, if you look for www.botspot.com. It's bot spot. Bot spot, I think. There you will find uh, a bunch of uh, assistants you can download and install inside your, your web browser that will try to help you to find information more easily and that have sometimes links to a database that has ratings about web pages. So if you, if you look at a web page, you can see what other people have rated this web page. Like in, that's interesting, that's crap, something like that. I've, I've tried to use them and I don't found them very interesting. And also I, th I thought that they know also, they now know what I will be searching all day and, and I don't really like that, so. <laughs> but might be interesting to look at that. So, anything else, somebody? Yeah. Yeah. The third kind was like Google and the upcoming IBM one. Okay. The IBM one? Google is www.google.com. So, should be should be able to to find that. Um yeah. Next thing is beside the web. If you can't think, you uh, find things inside the web, and if you have all these used all these pluses and, and put things into quotes, and if you found a nice web page, look for more keywords on this page and refine your search again and, and again and again. And if you if you don't really find things, you can go and try to. To find stuff uh, in the in the Usenet, like in in Usenet news, and uh, the the first step for searching Usenet news is, Pami, Deja News, yes, the archive of the internet or something they call them. Oops, Deja. Dot com, 
Deja.com, Deja News. They've been there like three years now. I think so. I think three years now. And they're indexing and they're archiving every single, I believe so, every single uh, message that is sent out, out in news. So that's really dead interesting because um, you can go and search on the last, I don't know, two or three years of Usenet news and find out what people were saying about what their new digital camera or their neighbors or uh, their last girlfriend and stuff like that. And that's, that's very interesting. I would actually love to, to show that, but I don't think it, it, it will be of any use. Um, you can search in, in Deja, like in, in all these search engines, like in using pluses and, and quotes and, and, and stuff like that. And, but it will search, uh, search in, in news only. You can even get a news account on, on, this, on this server, so you will be able to uh, browse the news via web front, front end. And what is interesting is that this will link you to, to people. Mostly, if you, if you have web pages, you won't be able to, to, um, to, to link a web page with a person. Sometimes you can, and sometimes it's, it's interesting if you find an interesting web page and you see there's uh, some names are mentioned, to use these names again for refining your search. Okay? If you find interesting stuff on Deja, you can click on the name of the of the person who had, has wrote the message and you'll get all the messages he has ever written for the last three, four years, I don't know. And, and you'll be able to browse all these messages again. So that's very interesting. I mean, there's, for example, on Rec Digital, no, Rec Photo Digital, I just brought me a, a digital camera and now I'm reading news on that. <laughs> and and there's, there's a totally crazy guy. He, I think he, he, he was like uh, fired by, by some company and now he's, he's putting up very interesting information about Kodak and Sony and, and even with names and numbers and, 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 and you, like in, if you have problems with Kodak machine so and so, call Kodak ad and use this extension for this guy and yell at them. And, and that's very interesting. So you can get people here. And if you, if you find people here, you can, you can also, of course, send them email if you, if you dare and, and look at what, what comes out. What's very, I think, very important with news is if you, use news for searching information, be aware that people don't like, people on, on Usenet don't like people coming in on a, on, a, on a Usenet group and just asking, well, I have this new digital camera and I want to know um, what, SOS, uh, what, what tools I can use with it. Please email it to me. Thank you very much. Bye. Uh, they don't like these people because, um, I mean, if you say email it to me, you basically say, I want this information and I don't care if anybody else gets it. So what, is, what, would be, what would be more polite would be to say, I have this new digital camera and I know these and these and these tools and I like to know if this list is complete. Please put it on the, on the, on the board here. Because then other people are also happy because you shared some information with them and they know where you are, uh, what you are talking about. They know where you stand, in, uh, like in, in knowledge, they know what you know, so they will be uh, better, able, able better to, to, well, yeah, find the information that you think you can, you can use, okay? Did you get me? I hope so. <laughs> okay, um, on news, people that, that only ask questions, they're like, I mean, everybody thinks they're only consumers, they're not sharing anything and the people don't like them, so you won't probably don't, you won't get an answer probably. So you want to, to share information first, say, I know that, I have tried this, yada, 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 and it doesn't work, so please help me. That gives the people a lot better understanding on, on who you are, what you do, and stuff like that. Also, on, for news, um, I'm pretty 
maybe talking about stuff you already know, but there are FAQs, frequently asked questions on news groups sometimes, so it would, would be the best idea to wait for this FAQ to be posted or to search Deja for the FAQ on the specific news group and then read it first and then uh, uh, start to, to fire up questions in the news group. Next thing is, before you use news and, and ask people, it would be best if you have tried these, these machines here first, because um, behind news there are always human beings, and human beings have some, some problems with language, you know, and, and style, and, and, and typing, and, and if, you, if you do use your grammar right, and if you can spell, and stuff like that, so if you, if you uh, ask for questions that are easily find, uh, findable on the web, you most, uh, you most probably get flamed and nobody will tell you anything. So, okay. Yeah. For asking question on news, you probably know that, but don't use closed questions. Like in, I want to buy a new digital camera, should I use model A or model B? question mark. Because that doesn't tell the people anything. And the, the answers will be limited mostly on these two models. So what you do want to ask is an open question that can't be answered by yes or no, or A or B. You want to ask an open question that has to be answered by like a text. Like, and you may want to use that because of blah, 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 stuff like that. So it would be a better question to ask, I want to make photos with a digital camera and I want to make photos of like rabbits and ducks and maybe sometimes uh, my children or something like that. And what models should I use and I can spend a thousand bucks or so. That would, that would be an open question and people would, would uh, be able to, to tell you about all the models that are out there and that are able and that will maybe fit your needs and, and maybe be a, a good tool for you to use. Okay. Yeah. A good thing is if you can join news and share some information first before asking questions because some people actually do look you up. That in they look if you have ever provided the community with anything valuable. And if you, if you just try it, that's okay. But if you didn't do anything and I'll ask a question, they maybe just tell you that you didn't tell anybody anything yet, come here asking question and they don't like it and so you won't get any answers, right? So next thing I should be talking about is web message exchange boards. That's something between the World Wide Web and news. You know, there are people out there that believe that the Internet is the World Wide Web and vice versa. Like in, I'm on the web, hey cool, you're on the web. And yeah, what's this Internet thing about anyways? And so they don't know what NNTP is, they don't know what a newsreader is, they never ever heard about a news service, stuff like that, and um, so they want and do share information on the World Wide Web. Um, there are like web-based message exchange boards. And these are sometimes very valuable sources. There are people on these boards that know a lot. They maybe don't know how the internet works, but they may know how digital cameras work, or the Kodak company, or Sony, or whatever. And so that makes them valuable. I mean, you want the knowledge and not what they, want, what they know about the internet and, and stuff like that. So finding these message exchange board is, is very, very uh, interesting, is a very good thing to do. And it's not that easy, as I have found out. You can search for, for them via using like web message exchange board or something, and then try to find message exchange board and use plus digital, plus camera as a search. 
uh, as, as search keywords. And another thing to, to find these message exchange board is via web rings. Everybody knows what a web ring is? No. Pardon me? No. no? Web rings. I think there's something called www.webrings or .webring.com. It's basically a service. It's uh, like a database where you can put in your own web page and on your own web page you can also put a banner that says I am on the Sony Digital Cam web ring and the Sony Digital web uh, Cam web ring is like a database that hosts it, that's hosted somewhere and that will make it easy to jump from one Sony digital camera related web page to, an, to another web page just by clicking on this on this banner that had, has mostly something like go forward in the web ring, go backwards in the web ring, show the next, next five random links of the web ring or so show every page of the web ring. Um, that can be very very interesting and so putting the words web ring or uh, so in, in your keywords for a search in, in a search engine can be a good thing to do. And these web rings will bring you eventually to these message exchange boards. And of course you can ask in the message ex exchange boards if there is uh, some, some other message, message exchange board or if most of the people are also in some news group, stuff like that. So cross-checking where everybody is, right? Yeah. Okay, next thing is using IRC. Everybody knows what that is? IRC? Who doesn't know what IRC is? At least one or two. IRC is old. It has been there for, for like years, many years. Some people have forgotten that it's there because there are now chat, uh, web chat stuff online and, and you can use web pages for chatting with other people, but that's crap, believe me. Um, IEC stands for Internet Relay Chat. That's a channel-based, text-only chatting system. It's server client based, that is you need an IRC client for your operating system. Um, you can use for Windows, I think, there's something that calls Merck, right? And you will find that on download.com or something like that. And there are also ERC clients, IRC clients for other, for every operating, operating out there, I believe. And this client will connect you to the next um, IRC server, and this will present you with a lot with a list of channels, and I didn't uh, really count them, but there are lots of them. IRC channels, they 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 have names like uh, CCC, and they have names like CDC, like in Cult Dead Cow, and and others, Cult Dead Cow, Cult of the Dead Cow. You know these guys. No, you don't? They're actually here. All the way from the US. Well, whatever. What you should be aware of is that, are, that there are, I think, three or so different networks, different IRC networks. There are many IRC servers, and these servers are connected to, uh, to, to other servers, and these build an IRC network. And there are several. There's something called Fnet, EFnet, I think. There's uh, something called Undernet, I think. What are the others? Anybody knows? Anybody? IRCnet? Okay. Pami? Okay. I hope you get it. I don't. Um, so there are several, and you should you should find actually uh, the same channel names on, on different uh, IRC networks. So you should also have a look on who is on this, on this, on this IRC and like is, are there 
two people on there or five or 50 or 500, right? And uh, if, you, if you have built up like a personality on one of these channels, uh, you don't want to find yourself on the wrong uh, internet relay chat network. I did that once and I thought, well, what's going on here? These people are all wrong. <laughs> they don't belong here in this channel. I thought they, they were f over from like uh, the Microsoft channel taking over the OS2 channel, something like that. But actually I was on the wrong network. So completely different universe, uh, these, these IRC networks. So on these channels, to get information is sometimes very, very hard because um, these are groups, uh, communities, where some rules apply, and if you don't follow the rules, the people won't tell you anything. So some channels are different. They will tell anybody everything they know if they just come in and yell, help. Some others will just kick you if you go in and say, help, right? So you have to go in, look around, look on, on what, what kind of, of language, what kind of style these people prefer. Um, look for robots. Most, mostly, I think, I think any, every channel has its own robot. That's basically a script joining uh, from, a, from a PC or Unix workstation in, in this channel, keeping it open. Yes, this, this channel opens with the first person that makes up a new name and it will close down with the last person leaving. And so for, for having channels always up every time, all the time, also if everybody is, is sleeping, you will need a robot to, to help it uh, being open. And these robots also uh, are mostly searchable, like they will react on some, some search strings or, or uh, uh, questions and they will be able to tell you, for example, when they have seen Hendrik the last time or Frank or whatever. And that's sometimes, sometimes very, very interesting. Um, yeah, so asking question here is socialize first. Try to get a grip on the group, on the community that's working on this, on this channel first and then um, try to ask questions the right way. If you, if you don't uh, succeed, you use another nickname the next time, yeah, <laughs> right? Because uh, they maybe won't talk to you any, anymore. Well, IRC is very real, real time, of course. Everybody has to be online to use that. And so you will have problems if you don't find the person you want to find on this channel. If he, if he is not uh, online, he won't answer your question, right? questions, right? So these, the, the value of the channel can, is, is absolutely, totally related to who is online, right, when, when you joined and when you asked your questions. So the value of a, of a channel can, can change over, over time, inside the day, inside the week, whatever. Yes? Is there a search engine for channels? No. How do I find the right channel? That's pretty tough to do that. Your IAC client, if you connect to a server, your IAC client will be able to give you a list of all channels in there. Okay? And you can try to search the lists and their descriptions for what you need. So you, can, you could go for like hacking and, and look there and you could go for photos and look there and but it's it's hard actually no, no, not all of them are this clear yeah like are in in what's that called um, like in OS2 or Windows and or Windows 95 that's easy I mean you know what these people are doing in there right but if it's if it's called like Atlanta Blues you don't know are these people jazz fans <laughs> or what so that that's tough, but if you find a good channel, that's almost uh, a very good source for information and for help if you, if you need stuff. People are able to react to you the very second you ask the question, and that can be, can be very, very good. Yeah, any questions on, on IRC? Anybody thinks that I should have mentioned something on, on IRC? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Your IAC client has some tools with it, like who is, uh, that's something like finger, that will give you some information on the person that is also in your channel. And it will also tell you on which other channel these channels these persons is. So if you find a person that seems to know what he's talking about or she's talking about, you may want to have a look and in which, what other channels he or she is in. So you can join these channels and, and look for, for information there. That's a good point. Thanks. Anything else? OK. So next thing is, what do we have? We have mailing lists, of course. Um, mailing lists, everybody knows what that is, I hope. <laughs> and uh, mailing lists are basically one server that has, that is operating the list, a list server. And this list server is, yeah, it has an address like in, like in, in mail.ccc.de, no mail at ccc.de, that's a list. I hope this list is dead by now. It should be. I think it isn't, but it should be. Well, whatever, that's the mailing list you can use for ask questions on the CCC. And there will be people answering you that belong to the CCC or not. We don't care. On this, not anymore. Well, whatever. Um, the point is, this is pointing to a list server, and this list server is pointing to a list of, of email addresses of individuals, of persons, so, or of, of other mailing lists, for example. And if you ask a question to a mailing list, um, you should be aware that you may be posting to like hundreds of people, so don't attach binaries <laughs> when, when, when posting to, to lists. Um, you may get responses, and lots of them, on one question, you may not get any response be because everybody is too bored to, to answer your, your dumb question. I don't know. And um, the answers can be, are absolutely related to what the other person knows and what mood she is in or he is in. Like and if they d had a bad day and you are as answering, uh, asking a, 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 a dumb question, you, get, you will get flamed or something. Uh, or they will send your ex elf over and, and you won't like it. But um, most of the time, these mailing lists are very interesting. And yeah, there are community mailing lists, like and you will find for, I was on this, this digital camera example, you'll find web pages on that web message board, you will find a news group for that, you'll find web rings, I, I did mention that, right? You'll find an IEC channel for that, you'll find mailing lists and several of them. So the, the, the most interesting uh, question is not if to find a, if, if there's a mailing list, but which mailing list to use. And that's something sometimes not, not so easy also. You can find mailing lists by looking in, in Deja News. Sometimes they're announced there in related news groups. You can find them by searching for their archives. Sometimes web ma uh, mailing lists are archived in a web uh, uh, in an archive and a database that, that has a web front end. For example, um, I bet some of you know book track, right? No, that's not CK, that's a Q. Bug track, some, some new, know this one? That's about security, IT security stuff. And bug track is, has an archive on geek goal, www.geek slash a dash dash go dot dot com slash bug track or something and and that will give you uh, a web-based interface on the archive of this mailing list um, there are several companies that offer list server services like and you can join them and uh, pay something or don't have to pay something for setting up your own mailing list which can be very interesting but only if there are some people on it for two people or so, it, it doesn't really work. So using list, using server, using list, and using archive as keywords for a search engine to finding mailing list is maybe a good advice. Okay. 
Yeah, mailing list, it's, it's a little bit the same like in IRC. Um, there's most of the time they have some rules on these lists and there's a special community behind it. So try to, to follow the list uh, a week or two to find out how these people are talking about what. Because you may f find yourself on the wrong mailing list and you, won't, won't, you don't want to ask dumb questions on the wrong mailing list. Yeah, did I? Yeah, listen first. Yeah, plus mail, plus list, plus archive, plus search is a, a good list of keywords for finding mailing lists. Yeah, so you may have used the World Wide Web. You may have used news and you have searched web rings and message exchange boards and you have found nothing that will really answer your question. Um, what you should have found is some names of people that look like they may be able to answer your question. So um, the next step would be to go for these questions. If you, if you, don't, if you can't find the information you need on the World Wide Web and you can't find it in news and you can't get people to answer this question in news and you can't find the information on message exchange board and, and you can't find, I can't make people to answer your question on message exchange board and you've used ERC, IRC or, or what, and, and everything else and found some, some mailing lists and searched them too. You may want to, to email some people directly and see if they are able to point you to useful resources or answer the question you have. Um, there are some rules that apply to emails and also to, to Usenet messages. Um, you don't know what the person on the other side is thinking. You don't know what their mood is. If they had a good day, if they had a bad day. If they're reading it at night or in the morning. If they're reading it at the work or in their private time. You don't know. And you should, should try to make your message in a way that, that it doesn't bring them up. It doesn't um, annoy them so much if they are in a bad mood. And it, it doesn't make, it doesn't ruin their day if they are in a good mood, right? So um, if you email people or if you, if you use news, be aware people always think that you're talking directly to them. That applies for news also. People read their, your, 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 your uh, posting and they think you are meaning them. Like in saying, I've heard the Sony Marvika camera is, is, is crap. You, you are, have just, well, I don't know, annoyed a million people out there that own these cameras. And of course, all the Olympus users will go, yes, right, boy. But um, you may want to have some information on the Sony camera. So if you say just, this is crap, and um, hope that people defend their camera and, and give you some information that way, it may not work. It may just give you flames over and over. So. Um, if you, if you email people or if you use uh, news, um, don't be too uh, formal, be informal, like and don't say hello Mr. and Mrs. something and uh, Mr. Forum or something like this or Mr. Message Board. Um, just talk to the people and if you, if you email people directly, try to state where you find their email. People don't, may, don't like it that they find some, some mail from somebody they don't know in their inbox, talking to them directly, asking them questions directly, and not giving money with the email. <laughs> and uh, so it is a good, good idea to tell them where you found their email, why you have um, emailed them, because I've tried that and that and that, and used this search engine with this keywords, and I used uh, this use channel, and blah, blah, blah and didn't find anything on this specific topic, may, uh, make, may you answer my question, please? Something like that would be more, would be better. Um, explaining what you already found out is almost the best thing you can do to have somebody answering your question. Because if you did a good search on the web, 
um, you may well find out something that this person doesn't know, right? They know maybe something you don't know, but with your search you may have come up with something they don't know yet. So sharing that information will make them much more, uh, will make it much more likely that they will answer your question and really try to answer the, the question right, okay? Um, yeah, sharing information is, is a very good thing. Also, um, gathering information on a specific topic and resharing it on, for example, news is a very good thing to get uh, the information on, on the stuff you don't know already. For example, if, you, if you're looking on information on a Sony digital, digital camera or whatever, an Epson, uh, it is a good thing to just write down what you already know about this tool and then share this information and say, well, this is what I know and this is what I need to know, what I don't know. Because um, if you do that, people know where you are. They know where you are information-wise, so they know where they can start. If you just ask the question, I don't know anything about this camera, could you please tell me something? They don't know where to start when, with answering the question. If, if they don't know where to start, they maybe don't start at all. And so you don't get an answer, right? So giving them a starting point by providing what you already know is almost the, the best thing you can, you can do. And um, yeah, trying to offer some, some feedback yourself on things you can do is, is a good thing. Yeah. Okay, to, to get to the closing of this, um, I like to, to share some, some basic rules on, on information sharing, I think. It's, it's like with information, it's if you have lots of it, getting more is easy. If you don't have any, getting some is not very, very easy because if you don't know what to ask, if you don't even know what you don't know, yeah, you have a bad starting point, right? If you know what you know and what you don't know, it's much more easy to find out what you don't know, right? Because you are able to produce some questions. That means if you look like you know something and, and try to share that by, by, by uh, try to advertise that by, by sharing information with other people, they are almost, all the time, you'll find people getting to you, telling you things that you don't already know and want, them, want uh, some, some question answered by you, right? I mean, it, it then works both ways. If you share information, they know you know something, if they ask you something and they share some information first, you will also be able to get to know more. So I think sharing information is, is on the one thing, it, it's, it's like rewarding, like it makes you feel good, and it's easier uh, by, by ch sharing information to get other people answering your questions, okay? A good thing to do is if you are not like in, I need this information by Monday. If you know you have like a month time or, or half a year or two weeks or something of time to find a specific, a specific information, it is a good thing to put up your own web page somewhere on GeoCities, on Yahoo, I don't care, uh, nobody cares really, and, and, and use this uh, web page to put up the information you have found out put up the links you have found out, and um, when asking questions on the web, saying, well, like, I'm uh, looking for information on this topic, and I have put up this web page, and there's sending everything I know, and I need to, to have these questions answered, that I, that I can put up, uh, that, that I can update the web page, and of course, get, give credit to everybody that uh, gave me some useful information. Um, that's a good thing to do. That will, will help others uh, to find out what you already know and, and they, they'll, they'll be convinced that you are resharing what you know with the community. And a very, inf very important thing, I think, um, at the end, try to verify your sources. If you get told something um, that may be utter crap, Right, like in people telling you that these uh, stocks of Microsoft are going to fall very deep, 
and you should uh, like uh, buy puts or um, buy stock of this company or sh buy this camera because it has all the features you need and even more. Uh, try to verify uh, the things. So there are a lot of people out there just talking crap. They don't know anything. So um, taking everything that's on news or on IRC or on the web for, for real and, and as a serious information all the time is, is not a good idea. And um, even with, with um, like news wire services like Reuters and they sometimes copy stuff from other news services. So if you read it, something and in information in three different places, it may have the same source. So, and this source may be wrong, so try to verify um, information um, that you make in important decisions on, okay? So, anybody, any questions? Anybody think that I have forgotten something? Don't have any questions? I don't believe that. That is very difficult. Finding information on companies that are not on the web is difficult. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is, is directory services, right? Like www.411.com or www.therealwhitepages.com, right? Um, these are people finding services that have emails and real names in there. They get these by parsing uh, news. So you'll find all the, the, the emails I've ever used inside a, a news reader and even the ones I used uh, when not be, uh, having the, the thing probably set up and stuff like that. Um, this is for finding people, also for finding people that are not on the web because they are sometimes buying CD-ROM information on, on people that don't have a mailing list but have a telephone number and, and, uh, and a street address, something like that. So there's also information directories for companies. I don't have a name, Henny, sorry, but there are. Um, what else? There's, of course, for, for companies that are on the web, and have a web page to find out some uh, people you, you may want to talk about, about their content, about the web service, stuff like that, is um, going for the RIPE database. <coughs> RIPE.net. That will, you can, you can get there to the who is uh, thing, and for example, I may won't give, give you my personal home address. Uh, when, when, if you ask me right here, but it's in there, bad thing, because uh, I own some domain names, right, some domains, and if you have a domain, there is uh, the address they, they send the, the invoices uh, in, so there you, there you can find um, even information some, some, some people would think is, is private. And another good thing is, I just recently found out, um, using PGP servers, like PGP key servers, you know them? Um, there is something like, I've forgotten the name. Look at pgp.com or pgpe.com and look for, um, for key servers. Uh, for example, some people don't really differentiate between their, their uh, public key they use for fun and for for uh, uh, other stuff and the PGP key they use for, for their work. So we just recently had this guy um, saying uh, on, the, on the CCC mailing list asking, well, I need somebody that can, can test my firewall at work and I'm working for a foreign, uh, foreign banking institute, but I won't tell you which. And well then, well, you know, um, putting his name into, into a web engine was one thing and I found out in, in, uh, for which banking institute he was working on because his name or his email address was 
used on, on some of their web pages. But I later found out that if I just have, had used his name for uh, asking, uh, uh, for asking, uh, for making a query on a PGP key server, and I then have used the, the key ID for another search, yeah, using his name to getting his PGP key, using the key ID, putting it in again, and then finding out that this is also the key he uses for, for communication f uh, over the internet uh, with, with, uh, with his uh, account, email account at the office, right? And so the name of the bank was in this email address there also. Bad move on his side, right? He was really, really impressed on, on that. Well, it was nothing, right? But he was impressed. So, who is PGP services? Um, to, answer the, to answer your question, um, Maybe I didn't found that yet for 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 Germany, but if you want to know something about companies that are not on the web and are selling things, there are some several uh, rating services for companies by customers. I have forgotten the web. Write me an email and and I'll find and I'll find it for you. Um, my email address is like hhf at ccc.de uh, I, can, I can give you the, an, an URL that will link you to a um, web-based forum where you can complain about companies if they send you crap or if, you, if, they, if they ripped you off, right? If you, they, there, there are some, it's just for consumer protection, right? There are some, some companies out there that are really ripping, off, ripping uh, up customers and you'll find them rated on, on some, some pages. And there are also companies in there that are not listed on the internet. But it's not like real information on who is running this company, who I'll be talking to, and stuff like that. No, I don't know where to find that on the internet. Any other question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. You can get different results when asking twice or twice um, uh, Alta Vista, for example. I believe it's something like they say every user need, can, can spend two seconds in our database, and if these two seconds are now over, I just give whatever it, it, it gave to me. And if you ask a second time, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. I believe, I believe, like if it comes to selling information, selling information is not cool at all. So selling search strings is really a good thing. I think you can really get into business with that, because a good search thing will give you even give you information that that comes down the road that 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 will will be there in the future. The information only will give will only be valuable one time. Okay. So question. Small question. How exactly does the search engine search for pages? Is it just like trying to go down a tree of links until the snowboarding on the page? Or yeah, that's, that? yeah, that's different in different search engines. You, sh you want to have a look at uh, www search engine watch or searchwatch.com because they have some information on how the different uh, uh, search engines work. Mostly they use spiders of, of course. Well they are roaming URLs and, and then going through all the links that are on one page. And some of them are, are using uh, information provided in the directories uh, on the server. And and they're using they are they are working differently. For example, Alta Vista is only checking web pages every month or so, but it will go to the very last page, to the to the very uh, uh, biggest depth it, it can go. It will check all the web pages on your server. Other um, search engines like in Hotbot, for example, I think it will check your your web site every two weeks, but it will only go to the to one, two, and three hierarchy 
uh, the, the hierarchies in, in, your, in your tree and then it will stop and it won't chain, uh, uh, search all the others. So depends on what is, is important to you. If you want to be uh, like on time, having, having uh, new information fast, you may want to use uh, the, the, the new bot, the hot bot thing or new bot. And if you want to search everything, or, or now well, <laughs> all the 20% that you can search right now, uh, you, you need to do, use something like Alta Vista. But I believe that um, Search Engine Watch has some numbers on that. So it's, it's different. What about the landing pages? No way to, to search these, right? Yeah, with dynamic pages, dynamic pages are a problem. And uh, usually, dynamic pages can only be, be searched by the search engines that are uh, by the local search engine provided by this server. For example, if you have uh, um, a company that uses Lotus Domino or a Microsoft uh, uh, server with uh, these crappy, uh, uh, how is it called? Active server pages or using notes, databases, stuff like that, you, you won't be able to, to find information uh, in, in Alta Vista, you need to use the search engine by www.domino.net or something. Or, so, yeah. Lo using local search engines, if you find that they're using uh, dynamic content, is a good idea. Okay, question? Other companies? I, b I believe so. I believe so. Um, I believe that you can pay um, search engine operating companies uh, to be uh, on higher on the list. I can I believe so, but I don't really have looked into that. Don't have looked into that. Questions? No question. Good point. What? Where? L O X. Look. Smart. Dot com and and they are sir they are how many? Just a K. Yes. They Look. Oh, that's interesting. So they're exchanging search strings there and even attaching human interaction to it. That's cool. See, I knew if I would do this, this uh, thing here, somebody would come up with something I didn't know, right? That's about sharing information and getting something back, okay? It works. You've just seen it. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Any questions, comments, remarks? Okay, so thank you very much for your attention and you're free to go. Have fun the next day. <laughs>